guys, welcome to Make It Dairy Free. I'm Larisha. I'm Andrew. And we are back with cheese. I feel like 2024 has started as the year of vegan cheese. Pretty much. Not necessarily a bad thing. I'm here for it, especially if it means that everything is just gonna keep improving from here. Um, we are here with Daya products. Daya has a very wish-washy wrap in the vegan world. Yeah. Um, when we started being vegan five, a little over five years ago, mm -hmm. the product was not good. <laughs> That's pretty Every, nicely. Yeah, everyone agreed that it wasn't good. They reformulated and their products were made with chickpeas. Mm -hmm. And we liked it. Yeah, um, it's pretty good. Up until this point, we were still buying it. It seems like this has pretty much taken over very quickly um, phasing out anything made with chickpeas. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see if this is still a good product. Um, the new ones are all made with oat cream. So it is completely reformulated to be a different product altogether. But also they came out with a ton of new products within that. Yes. Did all that make sense? I think so. I was trying to follow, but I just kind of let go and just said, you know, <laughs> Hopefully they know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right. So there, they have released 18 new products. We tried to find everything. We couldn't. We reached out to Daya multiple times. They never got back to us. So we have what we have. Um, as far as what's missing, there's a couple of slices, a couple of the blocks, and then I think one of the shreds that are missing. Um, otherwise, we pretty much got everything so i think we have a good mix up so before we start saying that point though are are you saying that like what's missing could possibly be here because you know how like they'll just make blocks but then make slices of the blocks or make shreds of the block so we might um, have everything right. but not quite the exact like if it was cheddar they would have cheddar slices Right. cheddar uh, blocks and a cheddar um, shred. You know what I mean? Okay, so. so let me, I have the website pulled up. Um, so they have a Parmesan that we don't have and uh, that's not in one in of the- any of the In flavors. any of the things. Okay. And also a spicy Monterey Jack. I said it right this time yes, in this you video. Did. Yeah, nailed um, it. Um, and they have, we got a, whoops. We have a block of jalapeno Havarti. I think that's how you say that. Yeah, I think you just say it a little quicker. That's all. Havarti. Um, so Monterey and this cheese are two different things. So I would say we also don't have that, but we do have a spicy one. Uh -huh. um, as far as the slices go, they have a provolone and a smoked Gouda also that we don't have in anything else. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a smoked Gouda block and a mozzarella block. So we have mozzarella in the shreds, yeah. but we don't have the block. So that would be the only one. So we are definitely missing some of the flavors. Yes, like provolone. Um, the Gouda. The Monterey, um, something else you said. Gouda. Gouda, yeah. yeah. I think Parmesan, which is like four. So yeah. we're, mi we're missing at least four of the flavors. Yeah. So, well, this, that's crazy because I feel like we have a lot going right. on on this table. So to know that you're um, still missing stuff. Yeah. If you have found one of those four flavors that we couldn't find, yeah. leave a comment below so everybody can get, you know, gauge your opinion on those things that we couldn't try. For sure. Um, what we are going to do is try the mozzarella sticks by themselves. Because uh -huh. that that's like a string cheese yeah. equivalent. Um, we are going to use the slices to make a grilled cheese. Um, the blocks we're gonna try by themselves also because that typically is how a lot of people used to eat block cheese. Obviously you can shred it and do that stuff. And then the shreds we're gonna make pizza bagels with just to try it out without taking up like hours trying to make actual pizzas with each one. Yeah, which would give everyone the idea of the melt factor, which is kind of what we all kind of look for anyway. Right. Outside of the taste and price. Yes. Um, so these are the first things that we are gonna try. They have mozzarella and cheddar sticks. Um, I'm gonna just slightly shift all of this stuff here so we can see. Ish. Okay, you wanna open this one? Oh, it says, says you need scissors and it like legit won't come off without scissors. 
Um, as far as allergens go, there's no top allergens listed as being a top allergen, but there is coconut oil inside of this, pea protein, and cornstarch. Um, Daya did have, I didn't cut enough. Daya did have sticks prior to this, but uh, did you ever end up trying those? What's that? When we had sticks like this from Daya? Um, I don't remember actually. I, so, I can't remember if it was the old yeah. formula or the new one. I remember trying those and we also gave them, I gave them to our kids to try. None of us liked them. Um, like our kids will usually, especially if it's something cute like this, they'll usually like power through and like throw it in their lunch or whatever. They were like, heck no, don't ever feed this to me again. So yeah. I'm hoping that these are better than that. Um, does the cheddar have the same allergens um, as far as, I had said pea protein, coconut oil, and cornstarch? Uh, I do see pea protein, coconut oil, cornstarch, um, nothing else listed. Actually, this, this ingredient list is pretty short, so it's easy yeah. to go over a few times. I was gonna open this, but I... Figured we'd just do one. Um, so just for reference, um, this is not a string cheese. It is literally like a... Block of cheese cut into smaller blocks. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, um, the smell smells like, like cheese. cheese, to be honest. So it's not, it's not far off already. We haven't talked about this in the couple of cheese videos that we've done so far this year. I think what's scary being vegan and the closer that we're getting to regular cheese, it's amazing for being in our house because we know like we're using the package, we know what we're getting. I think what's scary is when we start to eat out and they're using products like this and we're like, holy crap, did they actually give me real cheese? Mm -hmm. So it's really cool, but kind of scary at the same time. Yeah, I, I think, I said that earlier um, in another video, not earlier like today or yeah. in this video, but I said that earlier in another video that, um, you know, them being made in the same facility was kind of scary or yes. whatever. So I, thinking about the amount of liability though, right. that the restaurant would have serving you the wrong cheese or, yeah. you know, I, I want to say like, they're probably just as scared. So they, they're probably yeah. trying to make sure they take care of it. Obviously, if you're like a, a factory worker, maybe or maybe not, depending on how much you love your job, you have the same, you know, feel about it. Yeah. But I'm saying like as a company, right. um, especially like as a restaurant, they, yeah. they probably have some pretty big you hope. concerns yeah. about like, you know. All right, mozzarella stick. Ready? Yeah. Okay. What's your initial thought? First couple bites, I was a little hesitant. After biting in a little bit more, it starts to actually get a little bit more of that milder, cheesy favor. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't feel like that initially to me. Okay. But it also, this is really creamy in terms of like its finishing taste. Yeah. And so far, no aftertaste. So far. Yeah. I will say that it's way better than the other one had such a weird like aftertaste that like that's why you couldn't get through it. This doesn't have that. Yeah. All right, cheddar. Stick. I'm not getting cheddar. I was going to say the same thing. Um it's still creamy. I almost feel like if you put both of these in my mouth and I was blindfolded, that I wouldn't be able to tell you which one was cheddar and which one was mozzarella. Agreed, right now, I agree. Um, I, I like the product. Mm -hmm. I think it would be great for our kids when they have things to do outside of the house to be able to grab and go. Um, they do only have one gram of protein per stick which I know a lot, of, like dairy families, like often give their kids cheese sticks as a way of getting them protein. Yeah. 
Um, so I don't think it's great for that reason to try to compare um, if you were looking for it for that. But I think it's a great like, you need a snack, you're running out the door, go. But as far as taste goes, I don't, there's not a difference to me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't taste the difference either. I was just gonna say that um, they, they both taste more mild. Like most cheddars that we've tasted through other companies, even Daya's prior product, it tastes like the cheddar is more of a sharp cheddar than just like regular cheddar. This tastes like, their cheddar tastes just like their mozzarella and they're leaning more mozzarella than they are cheddar. Yeah, yes. All right, so we agree there. So the other one we said that we were gonna try by itself. I almost don't see a point in trying this one because it's cheddar too and it's a block. You wanna see if the ingredients are the same why I opened this one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this one is the jalapeno. And again, it has pea protein, coconut oil, and cornstarch as far as allergens go. I was trying to see if there was like a, oh, a peely thing. Peel, it says pull here, not peel here. Yeah, this, this is the same. It's the same. Literally the same exact product here. Okay. So unless we're cooking it, I don't, I don't see a point in tasting them all raw. Let's grab a knife. You wanna just chop it up with the scissor? No. Okay. <laughs> I cut a pretty big piece there. All right. You want to just try like this size or you want bigger? Yeah, I'll take the smaller one. That's fine. Oh, Lord. All right. Yo. Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be 100% honest. Okay. I don't know that I ever had a Havarti cheese prior to being vegan. Okay. So I don't know what that consistency is supposed to be like. So we'll start, we'll start there. It literally, the, the texture tastes like this with jalapenos added to it or spices. Um, so I don't know if it's supposed to be, you know, the same, like if it's supposed to be crumblier or like butterier or like anything like that, but it literally tastes like that in a block form with some spices and jalapenos added. Well, I think I think it's fair if you're making a vegan product that's going to be like like this, like block cheese and stuff like that. That comparing them to what they used to be like is is fair to do. Right. So the provolone in a block cheese, gouda in a block cheese, cheddar in a block cheese, mozzarella in a block cheese. Like, as far as the texture difference, right. it was very minute, I think, if it was in a block cheese type yeah. of form. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I feel like it's, they all kind of got formulated to the same thing instead of like, if you had fresh mozzarella in comparison to like, if you had like cheddar that was then a block. Like cheddar also always felt like the same texture no matter what. Yeah. But once you started to go outside of some of those other cheeses, you would have started to tell a little bit of a difference. Havarti, I, I think I remember that being a bit more creamier, mm -hmm. um, closer to a mozzarella, but I, I don't, again, I, I think all of these are kind of the same texture. Yeah. So even, even before being vegan right. as a blocked yeah. cheese, uh, blocked, as a block <laughs> cheese, um, you know, yeah. It, it, that's in my opinion. Right. You know what I mean? That being said, I do like the flavor of this. I think it would be great shredded and on tacos or like on a Mexican style pizza or like something like that. Yeah. Um, the flavor is really good. Yeah. I was going to say that you don't usually see like a, a blue or a feta in a block form. But if you did, those are the ones that normally like crumble, crumble. apart and stuff. Yeah. You know? I will also say that there's still no aftertaste that I'm getting from after eating like everything we've had so far. So I have, I have this like, I wouldn't call it an aftertaste, but I have like a leftover taste. 
like I could almost still like taste it on my breath. It's kind of like if you eat an onion or a garlic yeah, or something no, like that. I can't do like, that. Like I, I still have like a leftover taste. Yeah. So it's like that kind of thing to describe what I'm trying to talk about. Right. Like I still, I feel that, but I don't feel like an aftertaste. Right. Which I think is much different than a leftover taste. Yes, absolutely. Leftover taste is not an official term. I just made it up <laughs> and ultimately tried to describe it to you like what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yes. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. All right. We are going to use the slices and go make some grilled cheeses and we shall return. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. So we have our grilled cheeses here. Um, just a disclaimer. Is okay. that what I want to say? Maybe. Um, about cooking them. If you watched our craft by not co video, um, I did it in the same way, which is very controversial to how Andrew likes to cook grilled cheese, but I wanted to do it the same. So we had a similar comparison. Um, it did not melt as much as the craft one did while it was cooking, but the melt that is here after throwing it in the microwave for 30 seconds is more melty than the craft one. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, so the first one we're going to do is American. Why are you, are you laughing at me? I usually make little funny faces in the camera, so I was just. There was a pool there. Did you see that? Yeah, it looked like more of a drip, but I'll go ahead and say it was a pool. All right. <laughs> so this is an American. As far as the slices go, it is the same allergens as the everything else we've said. So Doesn't smell any different after being cooked either. Coconut oil. What did I say? Pea protein and cornstarch. Ready? Yes. I like it. I just feel. At first, I thought I had a weird taste in my mouth, but as I kept chewing, I don't. I don't. I don't get that gooiness on my teeth. Did you have it? I, I do feel like it was um, similar to the Notco thing. I don't think it was like a, a gumminess, but more like a, a cream that was easily just like, I can get off my mouth real quick. I feel like this one slid off more easily though. Okay, they can have your opinion for sure. Okay. Right? Cheddar or Swiss? Uh, it doesn't matter to okay. me. Okay, let's go with Swiss. It's definitely more of just like a creamy. I was gonna say maybe going this way because you're uh, doing like the gravity thing. So uh, maybe, you know what I mean? All right, we'll do it with the next one. Ready? Mm -hmm. At first I was gonna say, I don't get anything different than any of the other ones, but as you chew, you get like a slightly, like much more buttery. I didn't say this tastes like mozzarella to me more than the mozzarella. It's actually really good. It's a good Swiss taste, I guess. Yeah, I like it. And then. I'm hungry, so I, I feel like I would, also like I would keep eating that. <laughs> you can keep eating them. All right, so you said do it this way. Like, like I feel like that fell apart. You're still going like slightly downward, like. <laughs> Like straight across. You can have the bigger one since you're hungry. I mean, I don't, I don't know why a pull matters more than like the allure. Yeah, I think that that's all it is though. Is that like so many people will be like, yeah. does it stretch though? Yeah, I don't, I don't. I'm all about the taste. Like, does it taste good? Let's go. Got mm, in my mouth. These three cheeses taste differently to me in comparison to eating them as blocks. Better or worse? Better. Like I can tell distinctly that I'm eating a different cheese. Okay. Before I feel like I couldn't tell which one was which. Outside of the fact that one had like pepper jack in it or something like that. Right. Um, for me, the cheddar and the American taste similar. But 
There was a little bit more, I feel like. Was that last one cheddar? Yeah. Yeah, I felt like it was actually more like more on the sharpy side. Like it wasn't sharp. It's kind of dull, yeah. but it was definitely more taste to me. Um, so overall, so just because we just tried another brand new vegan cheese that's out, how are you feeling about, because you said like that blew you away. Yes. How are you feeling? Because Dea was your go-to brand. Yeah. How do you feel about this versus what you tried? Well, Dea was my go-to brand, not only because the taste was decent. I ain't gonna say it's the be it was the best, but it was definitely pretty decent. Um, and it was better than a lot of what was available, but it was also super available. Um, like I could find it almost anywhere in comparison to the other brands yes. that were out there. Right now, I'm still leaning that the Notco one te te technically to me is better. Mm -hmm. um, due to its ability, like that taste, um, the texture was really good. Did you try the the cheese flap thing too? You were doing that with the other oh, with one. Oh, the other one. Um, and I think that that like that, one's already that was like apart. a small smidgen of like a this doesn't feel like cardboard like the other ones are. Yeah, the, this has a flap to it, but like it wasn't. It is not as elusive. Like it, it was yeah. kind of like more like uh, you're flapping like a piece of paper in comparison to like the other one. We felt like we we're like flapping a rag. Or something yeah. in the nature of it you just know what I mean? felt like cheese, yeah. which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm still on the Notco. The again, Notco might fade to the back because of the fact that the availability before was just wasn't there. Right. And um, who knows? I don't know if the price point's gonna be very competitive in comparison to this one or very on par. Like you know what I mean? So right now. Dea hasn't quite disappointed in comparison to what they had before. Also, this one's less oily. I yes. hated that about, it we haven't gotten to the shreds yet though, Yes. but I hated that about Dea's prior product is that it felt extremely oily and this one doesn't feel that way right now. The yes. shreds you could really tell though before. All right, so speaking of shreds, we're gonna go make some pizza bagels and then We'll come back with those and tell you if they're oily or not. But we are back. We didn't actually make pizza bagels because Andrew made a good point that if we start adding other things like sauce and stuff, um, it would take away from the cheese. So we literally just melted cheese on bagels, um, the same amount on each one. Which I think is good too because melting them on bagels, we were able to do it at like a higher temperature rather than just putting it on the stove like a grilled cheese or something yeah. like that. So it, it would somewhat mimic what you would get if you were doing like a pizza right. um, or something like that. Yeah, so we have a Ninja Foodie, which is basically like a toaster oven which a bunch, with a bunch of different features. It's like a little thing. Yeah, so we put this on all on the same tray and then we did it on the bagel setting. And so the we toasted the bagels first, so they were already slightly warm, and then they went back in the under the bagel function for, I think it's three and a half or four minutes. But I wanted to point out that this was not under a broiler, and they melted beautifully. So I think that's a huge uh, win for for these for Dea. Yeah, yeah, I would I would say it's, I was a, just trying it's a good to, thing. Um, that... I did want to point out I made these, so you didn't like touch them because you were helping with the girls, but if you touch these, th there is a slight oiliness to mm -hmm. it, but I don't feel like it's as oily. I was literally gonna say the same thing, like even even the cheese looking at it here, oh, okay. it looks oily, but nowhere near as bad as it was right. prior. You can put it here. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing with this? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so like slight, it comes off a little bit, but it's nowhere near. Yeah. I literally just repeated what you just said. It's all good. Okay, we're, we're gonna start at the top. This is the Italian blend. All of the shreds have the exact same allergens as everything else we've tried. So coconut oil, pea protein, cornstarch. Really quick, do you think we should, I, we don't have to. Okay. Do you think we should start with like a neutral flavor? Sure. First, That's or fine. no? No, it's fine. Mozzarella or cheddar? Either. Okay, we'll go with Mott's. There is, there's a little pool. There, there we go with the. Go up. 
Okay, I'll go out next time. No, nah, it's all good. I, I mean, that, that was actually more... Of a pool? Like, you could see it trying to, like, at the same time, rather than it was, like, globby down here and not which is, globby which up here. Which is likely, like, the shreds yeah. coming together. Although this does feel, like, gloopy. Uh-oh, we'll see. All right, let's go. I immediately get, like, the it's on my teeth. Mm-hmm. And harder to come off. This part tastes exactly the same as before. In terms of like, not not actual taste, I'm sorry. Texture is exactly the same as before. Mm -hmm. The gumminess type of type of thing. Yep. Yeah, that, that to me is, and again, I got to a point that it didn't bother me as much. Right. But if we're comparing based off of, you know, one shredded cheese to the next, then yeah. Yeah. Um. The taste is better, in my opinion. I'm not, I don't wanna speak for you. Um, but it it does still have that same mouthfeel that Daya is known for. Yeah. Yeah, all right, ready? I also this wonder if it's, I also wonder if it's, they do this because they, they wanted to have that pull. Mm -hmm. Not getting a huge difference myself. Yeah. I feel like this is gonna be the same exact thing. So we can like quickly take a bite, but this is literally just cheddar and mozzarella like mixed together. So just this one and this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing different. I actually do think I like the blend better than I like them individually. Okay. Um, I know that's weird because we keep saying they taste very similar, but I feel like I can taste like a slight difference when they're together somehow. Probably, yeah. I don't know. All right, back to the Italian one. We were the original. Doing. All right, ready? Mm-hmm. I mean, what is, it, what is the difference between Italian blend? Is it supposed to have like herbs or something in it? You can go ahead. It says that we love to use our delicious Italian blend shreds in lasagna. Use our shreds just as you would a dairy cheese. This tastes like the mozzarella though. Like I don't see any difference in, it literally has like the exact same, less than two, it's literally the exact same I ingredients. Say I taste nothing different. But. There's nothing different in those two. All right, this is the Mexican blend. Is this just uh, cheddar and mozzarella mixed? It does, it doesn't even, like there's no, <laughs> it does not look like there's any difference. And I guess they say natural flavors. So like, I guess there could be, they're putting natural flavors for like a proprietary blend, but it does not appear. Usually you see like some taco seasoning inside of like a Mexican blend. What? I don't know if you do. I think you get more of that like. Well, like a jalapeno or something. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, sorry. something like that. I'm about to say taco seasoning. Like what the? But yeah, I'm not. Did you get any of that? No. Is, I, this, this might be the same as this one. They're exact same. The ingredient list technically extends all the way across here and not all the way across there. That's like a first difference, but. All right, hold on. Daya but, cream, oat cream. Mm -hmm. Go down coconut oil, tapioca yep. starch, yeah. safflower, corn starch, and then 2% cognac flour, yeast, fruit and vegetable juice, annatto, salt, dextrose, tricalcium phosphate, xanthan gum, lactic acid, and natural flavors. So all those ingredients, this extends further. <laughs> It's the same exact thing. <laughs> yes. I get the very slightest hint of like this jalapeno cheese inside of there, but I also feel like I'm making that up at this point in my life. Like at I'm this wanting point in your it, life. At, just like at this point, like I feel like I'm making it up in my head. Got it. Okay. I, I was just making sure. Because I Because when I took a second bite, I was like, nah, I don't think that it. Well, I wasn't sure if this was a different point in your life that we needed to reference. I'm pretty sure it's the same. No, it, it is. To me, I don't taste any 
difference? any difference. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like there's there's <laughs> I don't like <laughs> there's nothing about that in here. Yes. Okay. Here are my overall opinions, and then you can say agree, disagree, add your own. Okay. Um, I think Daya has improved on their original product. Overall, like across the board. Oh, is this like you're saying something and I'm immediately supposed to say something? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. You, you had looked at me and paused. I wasn't really sure. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I think that they have improved overall on their chickpea protein blends. Um, I feel like a lot of the things taste exactly the same. And so that's a struggle for me when we're like comparing the different ones, which we usually try to say like, oh my gosh, this is like a really good Mexican blend or this is a really good jalapeno. To me, they taste like very, very similar. So that's kind of difficult. Yeah. Um, I do feel like if this one is just as available as their original products, like all they're doing is like, they're gonna be in all the same stores, but the companies are just switching out like which products they have. It's still gonna be easier to find and it's a great product if that's the only one you can find. That being said, tasting the Kraft slices last week, if Kraft comes out with shreds and blocks with Notco, it, it's like game over for pretty much everybody else. I, I would agree. Okay, I'm gonna look up the where we, I got them, what the prices were, um, while you give your opinion. Um, well, I, I, my opinion is very similar. I don't. I'll, I'll try to keep talking while you're you're going, but my opinion is very similar. Um, I think it's kind of like, I would rather a, a company make two or even one really good cheese than to make 18 different products and them taste all the same. Right. And it'd be a, you know, okay, or the word you used in our last video, subpar, you know, cheese. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that we have an overlap of what looks like one, two, three, four, five cheeses, but it all tastes like one. one. Yeah. I could see that being a waste of money for somebody who may be excited to have, you know, oh, they have a Mexican blend. I used to love, you know, this a Mexican blended up, cheese on top. Yeah, you know what I mean? I've never had an Italian blend. I wonder what that's gonna taste like. Right. Like that, 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 that'll be really disappointing buying that and then being like, wait, this tastes just like the cheddar or the mozzarella and cheddar yeah. or, or what have you. So in my opinion, I think that they improved on their chickpea product a little because it's like a little less oily. I like the fact that it's oat. Um, for people who may have had some problems with chickpeas. Sometimes I hear that chickpeas could, you know, hurt your stomach a bit and stuff like that. I don't find many people have the same qualms about oat. Yeah. Um, so I think that's good. I'm also happy to see someone do it with oat because the last oat cheese we tasted was- <laughs> It was uh, really gross. It was bad. It was like really bad. So this was really nice to see somebody capable of, you know, pulling that all recipe together and putting something out on the market that is is pretty decent but i i still don't think it's it hasn't budged much from its last if we're talking about the last one was like you know was a 10 or la i wouldn't even say it was a 10 last one was like a seven or an eight this would be like eight and a half maybe 8.1 8.3 like it, it it to me it hasn't like boosted past that that much yeah there is no aftertaste for the most part besides the shreds these other products don't seem to stick on your mouth as much yeah so that's also a benefit i do also <clears> want to <throat> point out that the the packaging on these say that it is gluten-free certified um i know a lot of people that are celiac or gluten-free have problems with oats sometimes being cross-contaminated with wheat so it does say gluten-free certified on the packages for the people that need to know that. Um, as far as pricing goes, um, the mozzarella sticks are actually $7 for six of them. So they're slightly over a dollar a piece, which okay. is high to yeah. me, but they're also, I don't, I don't know that there's any other easily found brand that's making a mozzarella stick. No. Miyoko's had came out with one 
and it's I don't think it's even on the market anymore. Yeah. Um, so again, if you need that, um, the shreds and the other the other products, the slices and the blocks are all five seventy nine, which is more than the craft was. Wow. So and it's actually more than what their other one was. Original one was. Yeah, we yeah. were paying around four four twenty nine four ninety nine at some places yeah um for it so it's higher overall and not much but like it's still yeah it's definitely still higher but i also i um i really don't see a point in making a mozzarella stick to, to be completely honest with you i see a point <laughs> in making a block i see a point in making a shred and i see a point in making slices but making a mozzarella stick like you could literally just take the block and cut it into sticks and that uh you and and that way you can do the sizes that you want you don't have to you know, do one that's too large or not large enough or, or what have you. When we're talking about sticks like this, I 100% agree with you because it's not like they're making a string cheese pull apart cheese that like kids are like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like we were growing up or like yeah. kids that can still have or choose to have dairy can do. Yeah. Um, I felt like there was something else I wanted to say. I'd love to help you, but I'm not really sure. Oh, it was. you had said oh, you, look. you feel like <laughs> <laughs> you had said you feel like you know they don't need to come out with necessarily a bunch of different products if they're all going to taste the same and stuff. I will still say that like I feel like it's kind of like the vegan burger market is oversaturated, right? And we keep saying like the vegan seafood market needs to expand. Mm -hmm much more rapidly than it has been because that's where someone can really like improve on. I feel like there's still improvement in the dairy categories that aren't necessarily being utilized yet. There's still not really an easy to find vegan cottage cheese, mm -hmm. which I didn't really like cottage cheese prior, but I know a lot of people did. There were some die hard cottage cheese people. Yes. Yeah, so um, for sure. I feel like We've found finally like a yogurt that we like, but I still feel like there's even, there are so many dairy free yogurts on the market, but most of them taste so gross. Yeah. So I feel like there's still room there somewhere. Yeah. Um, And then I feel like we were finally coming into like a whipped cream era where we're finding things that taste good and stuff like that. So like the point being that I still feel like there's some room for improvements that they could have focused on, but yeah. I'm sorry. Did I just are, ramble? Are, are, yeah. Yeah. Are you saying they, as in Dea, could have focused on these other areas? Or saying, are you like, saying they, like the the vegan market of people who are creating stuff, has some areas they could improve on and they don't need to make so many cheeses? I'm not really sure which one we're saying. Both. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I look. I think if you're trying to do cheese and you want to do it well, you focus on one, maybe two cheeses, do it spectacularly and call it like, that's it. Yeah. That's all you need to do and make it available to a bunch of people. Like this is, this is literally the definition of doing too much. <laughs> when it all tastes the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like literally the definition. Yeah. Like what do we need all these cheeses for? And literally all of them taste just like the, the basic one. So. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. There's some other areas. I don't think Dea needs to necessarily jump into another area. Right. I, I think they need to jump into perfecting one or two cheeses and that will make people happy. Yeah. And even if they do, do like, if you jump into something other than one or two cheeses, I think you make a variety of like allergen friendly cheeses in a sense, like, if you think cashews would do better, but you don't think cashews would sell amongst everybody because it's a higher allergen or something in that nature. This is just an example. But cashews are creamy in general whenever you blend them up. Then you make it out of cashews and then you make one out of oat and then boom, you have like a good separation of like these people will take this, these people will take this because I focused on, you know, just addressing some allergens. Yeah, and just... Back to the last video, we said we need a podcast because we, we keep talking like podcast style. <laughs> Maybe in this video or all the videos where we just keep talking, you put podcast as like the stop. 
<laughs> so people will, if they just want to skip right to the podcast portion, they just. <laughs> so I understand what you're saying, but to be you typically and play devil's advocate here, um, one, I feel like recently in one of our videos, we talked about how, oh, when, I think we mentioned it in this video, but it was in the last video where we were saying like, you didn't know that it could be made in the same facility. So typically a, a company as big as Daya has their own facility, okay. which I don't know if they do, I'm just saying. Uh -huh. um, so if they were to make, you know, a cashew blend and a not cashew blend, and then like people with allergens are like, well, was it clean good enough? It's made in a facility that has nuts. Like, I don't know if I can trust it. Like, so I feel like you run into some things there but also I know from just like learning about like product marketing and stuff like that, like there's only so much space on a shelf that you know you can get your products into. So I wonder if like, they're like, well, we need to keep it the same because we only have, like we can only get, you know, four or five SKUs inside of a um, store. So we need to keep it the same. We can't have like all these different products, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm sorry. I thought you were getting some to, to like a particular thing or like are you I just naming a bunch of things? No, I'm saying I understand your point and I think it would be a good idea, but these might be reasons why a company can't do that. Got it. And I guess to touch on that fa like portion of what you said. Yeah. I think those are concerns no matter what. Yeah. Like contamination of anything because most contaminations that are cross contaminations aren't always like other food related contaminations right they're usually like some type of like i and i'm talking about food in general not just dairy free stuff right like the contamination is like some breakout of a virus or somebody's hair or somebody's like it's usually that kind of stuff and maybe more of that other stuff is true too but these are the ones that tend to like scare people the most, yeah. <laughs> affect people the most. You know what I mean? So I think all contaminations are always a concern. Yeah. I don't know if trying to, fo I guess what I was trying to say is like, if you want to make a cheese, even if you have, you know, four or five SKUs inside of one store, then I don't, I don't care about that. Or I don't think a lot of people care about that in the vegan world. They just want one good cheese. Right. And if that means it meets everybody's allergens, then make it meet everybody's allergens. But yeah. my point is, is that if you thought, oh, I made this, but it may not be good for some, like I'm sure oats is not good for some people out there. And some people are like, oh, they changed the recipe. Right. Now to oat, now I gotta find a new cheese. Mm -hmm. My point is, is that maybe you can make another blend. You right. have one good product and now you can make that other blend just using something different mm -hmm. in order to address those folks who can't have chickpeas that are now having oats right. or can't have oats so maybe they can stay with the chickpeas. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I get that. I will say that I'm really happy to see that the, so this is our third cheese video in yeah. 2024 already. Um, it is likely some other company is also gonna come out with some new cheese product this year because it seems like the year of vegan cheese. Um, I will say that I'm really happy to see that out of the three that we've tried, they're not using um, the new, that new like proprietary blend thing where it's like mimicking dairy milk where like people that are dairy free can't have it. Mm, that's that, what you're saying. That nothing is used at. I say that because I can't have that stuff. And so that's why we haven't tried a lot of that on the channel. Mm -hmm. um, but also like I know, <clears throat> excuse me, I know how much of a disappointment it is seeing like the vegan groups and the dairy-free groups like that are out there where the people are like, now I can't just even read a label. Like it's become even more difficult to understand. Yeah. So I just want to call out like, I'm really glad to see that these companies are coming out with vegan cheese that is improving drastically from five years ago, let alone like 10, 20 years ago yeah. that are sticking with, you know, normal natural ingredients that show it can still be done. We just have to get a little creative. That's what I was looking for. Nice. I agree. Okay. Anything else you want to touch on in our podcast session? Yes. There's plenty to touch on in the podcast session. 
but I'm not going to because at this point the video is probably like 50 minutes long yes. and someone's like, you know what? I was using this to, you know, get by for a half hour and now I got to like piece it together on another half hour that I got because you guys made this one really long. And somebody else is like, I turned this on not knowing how long it was going to be and I was like, I'm going to clean until the video is done and then they're like, wow, like look how much I got done. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Goes both ways. This is true. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you see any other products out there that you would like us to try, leave a comment below and we will do our best to find it or reach out to the company to have them send it to us. Um, I hope, what, what do I usually say? Do you want to podcast topics on YouTube under Make It Dairy Free? Are you asking them or me? Oh, I'm asking you, but they're available to listen, right? Like we could literally use topics to talk about while we're trying stuff openly it, i don't know it could be either while we're trying stuff or maybe we're not trying something maybe it's just feedback on something like maybe like there's new documentaries or something like that that would be oh, like so a, we're talking about a our podcast that you know what are some documentaries to watch or what's our you know views on the new documentary that came out and and things like that i'm just saying maybe it might be a good idea i'm not saying that we're gonna do it I'm throwing it out there, but if you feel like we should do it. <laughs> Let us know. I'm not opposed to that idea. Yeah, cool. Um, all right, so we hope that you have a fantastic week and we will see you in February. I think this comes out the last week of, I don't know. We'll see you next week. We'll see you the next time you watch. <laughs> I love you. Love you too. All right. Love you guys as well. Yes, we're we good. You. Peace.